Hey guys, welcome back to Intro to Coding. In this video, we are going to go over tuples and sets. We're gonna merge it all into one video here because uh, they're pretty similar. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Boop. All right, we are back where we were last time with our, uh, our lists. Um, the first thing we're gonna go over today are tuples, and they are ordered, ordered, and immutable. So again, what does ordered mean? It means that like a list, there's an order maintained in the list. So the first thing is the first, the second thing's the second, the last thing's the last, etc. Uh, an immutable means, unlike a list, means it cannot change meaning the value at zero. So if you have something at the start of the list, it is at the start of the list, that's it. So for a tuple, it's that's basically how that works. So it cannot change. That's what immutable means. I'll, do, I'll hear, I'll go immutable, it cannot change. It is the like, the, the anti-mutable, basically. It's like the, the evil twin of mutable. All right, I have commented everything out before, so if you're following along, um, also if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry, but if you're following along, uh, I've commented everything out. So we, we're still in the same file though. So let's go var one equals, this is how you define a tuple. So instead of the square brackets, you're going to actually use the regular parentheses or the curved brackets, I guess you could call it. Um, so let's let's put some things into our tuple here. Same thing like a list. You have it's you have a comma between your between your values in, in your list. And let's add in a banana, banana, and strawberry. Okay. Now let's print out our print out our var one. Apple, banana, strawberry. Great. So just out of curiosity, let's print out our type of var1. Because we printed out the type before up, up above, um, somewhere up here, uh, and it was a list. Uh, let's print it out here. Tuple, class tuple. Perfect. So we know that it's a, it's a tuple. You know, it's not a list. So we know we're, we're doing things right proper so far. Um, okay, what if we do var1 equals apple uh, and we print the type of var1. I didn't put type. You're right, we would have just got var1. Uh, what, have, what are we gonna get here? A string? That's weird, right? So this is correct, but the reason it's, it's actually a string is because it's kind of using like, if you know, if you know bed mass or that's what we called it, at least bed mass, like brackets, exponents, like, you know, in math. Um, this is basically just saying like, you're just putting a string, but you're putting some brackets around it. So maybe you wanted to multiply it or do some math around it. Then you're just putting brackets around it. So why isn't this a tuple? Because it's a, sing it's a tuple with a single element, but it's not actually a tuple yet because we haven't added a comma. I know it's kind of weird, but if you have a tuple with a single element, you have to add a comma. And now, if we run, it is now considered a tuple. So we now know that this is a tuple because we're printing the type afterwards and it is saying tuple. Weird, I know, it's, it's pretty weird. Let's also change our var1 and let's try it again back to, actually no, let's just get rid of these and we'll just use this here. And let's print out the first value of our tuple. What is this gonna be? It'll be, should be apple. Perfect, we get an apple. All right, so say we wanna change a value in a tuple. So like a list, you could type var one zero equals, so we're gonna change apple, and we're gonna change it to pear. So, so is this going to work? Let's try. Tuple object does not support assignment. Why is that? 
So this is because a tuple is immutable, so we cannot use it at all. So if we wanted to look at the the dot like we did for the list, what are the the methods that it supports? You can see it only supports count and index, meaning that you can get the number. Uh, same with like you know if you do len len of var one, uh, we can get. Let's get rid of this so it doesn't error. We can see that there are three. So there are three values in this tuple. We can still get the index or still get like, you know, whatever's at that index from it. Um, but there's, that's basically it. That's all we can do with the tuple. We can add, we can define the tuple and that's it. Tuples, you can kind of consider it as like a constant in that once you've defined it, it will not change. Uh, you can change what var one is, but, but if you want to change anything in var1, as in any part of the tuple itself, you cannot change that. All right, let's move on to uh, the next part, which is sets. Uh, so a set is similar to a tuple, but it is unordered and immutable. So why would we want something that is unordered and immutable? Sounds weird, right? Well, let's just use our var1 again. And a set is, we'll kind of just have our apple, banana, strawberry example again. A set is defined with a curly brace. Um, and we'll have apple, banana, and strawberry. Now, let's print our, our var1. Uh, okay. We have apple, banana, strawberry. It looks basically the exact same as how, it, as how it's defined here. But you can actually notice it's apple, strawberry, banana. It's not listing it out the same way that I did, right? It's not apple, banana, strawberry. It's apple, strawberry, banana. That's how it's printing it out because it doesn't care about the order. The order of a set doesn't matter. It can be in any order that it, it wants. It doesn't really matter. If I print it out again, it will still print it out the same way. It'll still print out apple, strawberry, and banana. But that's only because of how it decides to print the values out. It just decides internally how it's going to do it. But it's it's not uh, if we added if we had another value in here, it's not necessarily always apple strawberry. It could be something else. So why do we want to use a set? Uh, if it's like a tuple, it's also immutable. So you you can't really change the value. But how do you even reference the value? You can't say if there's if you know there if it's unordered and you don't know which of the what of the order is you can't say like var zero right yeah we get an error set object is not subscriptable i guess that basically just means that you can't you can't try and access an index because there is no index it's unordered okay so why have a set then because a set is unique a set has to make sure that the values within the set are unique. Meaning if like a list before you could have apple, 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 or how we had like two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. And if with a set, you can only have a single value in a set that is some specific value. So here we couldn't do banana apple. If we try and do this, let's just get rid of this print. What's going to happen? Well, it didn't error because it's smart, but it just made it apple strawberry. There's not two apples. It didn't add two apples to this list. Okay, so it, it, still, it still kept it so that it was always going to be two. Even though we added in two apples, it still just set it to be a single apple because we only care that there is a single uh, version or iteration or whatever you want to call it, unit of something within the set. Okay, so what if we want to add something to the set? Yes, it's immutable, meaning we can't change values in here, but because we can't even access these values, we can add things to the set. So say we want to add in another value. You can see if we do the var one dot for this, we get a bunch of different things here. So we can add, uh, let's add a uh, pair. Okay, and now let's print off of our one. Bam, now we get banana, pear, strawberry, apple. Okay, perfect. 
Now, what if we added, want to add in multiple versions of something? What if we add in, we can actually use the, the thing called update, method called update, and we can pass in a whole other set. So we can add in Apple, even though we already have Apple, it won't matter. It'll just, you know, use one. It'll make sure one's there. We can add in steak and bread, bread. And now let's print out our bar one and see what we get. So we get apple, steak, strawberry, banana, bread, pear. So we had exactly what we had before, but we added in the steak and we added in the bread, but we don't have a second apple again. Now, again, why is this useful? Because we can determine if something is in this set, right? Just like before, we can say, is apple in bar one? Perfect, it's true. So kind of a bit of foreshadowing here, but if we wanted to make a game where a player could guess something and their guesses were unique, meaning they shouldn't really guess the same thing more than once, say Hangman. If somebody wanted to play Hangman and you, you know, in Hangman, you typically, uh, you guess a letter at a time but you're never gonna guess the same letter more than once because you've already guessed the letter. So in this case, if we had var2 equal an empty set, and then the user guessed a letter, we can say letter equals input, guess a letter. And then we can say var2 dot, uh, or we can check if, if the letter's in the set. So if letter is in var2, then uh, you already guessed that. Uh, else we will var2 dot add, or sorry, <laughs> it is add, uh, the letter. Okay. So we're saying if the letter is in the set, then we're going to, then we're going to, uh, say you already guessed that. Otherwise we're going to add the letter. Let's add some letters here because right now we, we would it would always just add the letter. So let's say that we uh, uh, guess like A E I O already. Okay, so let's run this. Guess a letter. Okay, let's guess A. You already guessed that. So you know we would just say, well, why we can't we can't continue the game of Hangman or we can't uh, consider that a guess because you've already guessed that. And, you know, we could just update, update it regardless, right? Technically, we don't even need to do this. We can just do an update at the end regardless, right? So we don't need to do it even in the else because we can always add the letter because the letter could be there before. So we can try again, A. Yep. Let's try again, B. Okay, we didn't get, you already guessed that. So we would proceed with the game. So we would see if they were correct. So another thing you can do with the set is actually remove things. So if we wanted to say, uh, let's get rid of our example here. Um, and we had our, uh, our long list of things here and our long list of foods that we had before, um, like the strawberry bread, banana, pear, apple, steak. Maybe we wanted to get rid of, uh, you know, the steak, uh, bar one, we can say remove steak. And let's also remove the bread. Uh, let's just keep it, uh, you know, uh, some some good old fruits. So we can now print var1. And now we just have apple, pear, strawberry, banana. Whereas before, we had apple, pear, strawberry, steak, bread, banana. All right. So that is the purpose of a set. You can kind of add things, remove things as much as you need. Uh, and with a tuple, it's just a constant thing. You set it and you forget it, but, or reference it if you want, because it is ordered. Um, so maybe this is like, uh, you know, the order of things that you're gonna ask a person something. So you're always gonna ask them this, then you're gonna ask them this, then you're gonna ask them this, and it's never gonna change. Then you could put it in something like this, because a tuple will always make sure that that's never gonna change. All right.
Thank you for watching this video. I hope uh, tuples and sets make sense. Uh, hopefully a little bit of where or when you may want to use them also makes a bit of sense. Um, if it, again, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below uh, or just say hi if you want to say hi. Uh, please feel free to like the video. It helps the video out a lot and it's free and subscribe if you want to be notified for new videos in the series. I'm going to, again, be posting Monday and Thursday uh, as best I can. Thanks so much for watching again. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go over dictionaries and then we're going to go over some loops, which is where we can get into some, into some real magic. Uh, so I will uh, see you then, I hope. And uh, remember, never stop learning.